G'day, how you all going? This is Ian Harris from Australia. Today I want to do a painting, but I just don't know what to paint. Oh yeah? Yeah, what is it, Jeff? I had a brilliant idea. What's that, mate? Well, the other day I was out driving, and I just took a little turn. Yeah. And I came across this beautiful, picturesque lake, and I took a pic. A lake? A lake. Yeah, have you got a, you give me a pic. Give me a look at the picture there. Oh yeah, you got a few shots of it. Yeah. Here. Just have a look through here. Oh, oh, oh too, too fast, too fast. Well, what's wrong there? Why can't yeah. I don't you don't want me to look at those ones, all right. Yeah, right? No, all right, no, that's good. All right, well, why don't we show the people on my display screen what photo you're showing me? Good idea. All right, this is the photo Jeff showed me of Lake Nangara, and we'll put our bit of style into it. I'll put my style into it. You would have seen the finished painting process in the beginning credits, in the opening credits, okay? So, for those people who want to know what size the canvas is, there it is there in centimetres, 30 centimetres, by 42 centimetres. It's a canvas board and it's just straight out of the packet, okay? So watch how I prepare this for the painting. Now the colours we're gonna use, they're going up the screen there just like that. They're getting all high and mighty and getting right up there, aren't they, all right? And also, um, I don't use many brushes. I usually use a two inch for blending and applying and my basic fan brush. So. If you'd like to come over here to my palette, and I'll just show you what I've got on here. Now, I've got my liquid flowing white paint that's flowable, and I've got my retarder because I want to make this surface blendable. And I've got, I'm going to use phalo blue. I love phalo blue. And I've got a touch of mid-tone grey there. And my brushes, as you can see, I'm going to use a two-inch brush to apply the paint and another two inch brush to blend it and of course my beautiful little fan brush I just love to use. Alright, I'm going to start off with my water bottle and I want to spray my dry canvas straight out of the packet however you bought it whether it's gesso primed or not and I'm going to, I might just dampen my brush Today's a warm day here in Perth, Western Australia, so I've dampened my brush. I'm picking up my Retarder and Liquid Flowing White. I'll put some more on there. I've got another little palette I've made, just so as it's not so much reaching in the way of everybody. Now this canvas is wet, and this paint is retarded. So let's get this white. I need more, I need more Retarder in there. Get this white and we're getting it all over that canvas. Look at it flow over there. See, it's created a wet white surface. So whatever color you put into that, it's going to bleed very nicely. Now I've cleaned my applicating brush and I'm picking up the phalo blue. And I'm mixing the phalo blue with the retarder. Now we're going to, I just want to get this in long lengths across the sky. I'm not doing it a solid blue because I want it to be broken up. It's going to have water but it's a lake so it's not so much the reflection of the sky. But can you see that white with the retarder and the spray on there, it's allowed this paint to hit the canvas in a different visual look. Now, let's put that down. I'm gonna grab my two inch brush and I wanna blend. I wanna blend it. So I wanna leave some whites in there. So we got different textures of blues and whites, not textures, different values. And you always need to be wiping your blending brush because this is all wet and damp. So I'll get the majority of it blended then I'll come back and really tidy it up but see what's happening there in our sky it's broken up bits of blue there's still light color values in there wipe all that blend it see it just it just makes its own way of life on your canvas because I haven't got much blue here but it's making up that lighter area all right, we're gonna have a horizon line. Normally when I have a horizon line with water underneath, I just grab my brush, I'll show you later when I finish blending, 
and I just stroke it firmly but with control. I like to stroke it with control and get those strokes right across the canvas. Because when you're stroking a, a canvas, you want your canvas to come alive. So I want my horizon line about here. So that'll be my stroking point. Just like that, see? About there. I'm just using the blending brush. We're gonna have a bit of a lake there. All right, my sky's blended. We've roughly got our area for the water. I've picked up some structured, good quality white out of a tube. That's gonna be my clouds, okay? So let me just show you some basic clouds. I wanna start with some small ones here. So it's just, you can just blob them on the canvas like that, right? See what I've done? There's me cloud. That wasn't hard. Grab yourself a blending brush and sort of blend that into that wet retarded blue. Watch this. I'm just tasseling in it, teasing it. I'm putting light values and dark values in it. Okay, and I've whispered up the top. See how easy that was? That's a distant cloud. Now we'll do another one sort of in front of it, a bit bigger. It's picking up the blues. Now I wanna not touch this cloud, I wanna just keep this one. So we get the bottom, you gotta give it a bottom and then you can tassel up and get the top of it fluffy like that, okay? And you practice these on a wet, retarded canvas. See how easy that is? These are just making beautiful, simple, easy, distant clouds. But sometimes clouds need a bottom on them, sometimes they don't. Now we'll get another one. I'm gonna wash that brush, because it's getting contaminated. Wipe it. I'm picking up some more white. Uh, we'll probably do maybe another little one here. Just like that. Leave the bottom on it. What I mean by leave the bottom on it is I'm not blending it into the atmosphere. Tassel the top of it. And then let's give another one in front of that. Just like that. And then we'll do the same. Leave the bottom on. So I'm blending down to the bottom but leaving the bottom on leaving the distinction between the two clouds and I'm bleeding that up into the top area. Blending, twisting, tearing it into that wet, blue, retarded colour above it. Okay, it might not look like much now, but they're the smaller ones in the distance. So I wanna try and create this cloud formation. So when you're looking at the painting, they're coming out like this, like they're not flat against the painting, okay? Now I'm gonna pick up that white again and we're gonna put some bigger ones on there now. So I'll do my normal cloud, come in a bit closer. So we'll sort of come off the painting. I'm oh, just, I don't wanna destroy the distinction between that other cloud here and this one. So I've just put that on in any old way. I'll blend, like I normally do, but leaving the bottom on it. See, I've left the bottom on that cloud, like that, see? Wipe your brush. Be sure to always wipe your blending brush. Now, I will tease the tops up a bit. Don't over blend the tops. Get in there, tickle it in there. There we go. I'll get another one over here somewhere. Um, maybe here. I'll just have this bit of cloud here all on its own, pointing across like that. Wipe your blending brush. I'm gonna blend from halfway down, but not into the atmosphere. I'm trying to keep a bottom onto it. Coming across there. Yeah, that's beautiful. Sometimes I muck with mine too much. See, I've blended the bottom onto that cloud. Wipe the brush and tickle the tops. Your clouds love a good tickle. Not too much, don't over tickle the tops. And just to sit this cloud down to give it some dimension, I've cleaned my fan brush and I wanna put another one 
distinctively in front of it here. And this other one is going to have its own bottom as well. Grab your blending brush, blend from just under halfway down to the bottom, but I'm giving this a bottom. I'm not blending it as you might have seen in previous videos. I've blended into the atmosphere. I'm giving it a bit of a, a bit of a backside there. Come across here. There we go. It's got his bottom on there. Like that. And I could probably tickle the tops of this gently. You don't want to kill those brightness against the dull colour of that one up there. You just want to sort of soften it. Before I get too far away, I want to quickly put some representations of those clouds into the water here. This is a lake, just like that. Grab my blending brush and bring them right across into there. And lo and behold, that bottom paint is starting to dry out more because it's a warm day here. So I'll get me water bottle and I'll spray that up and I'll pull that through the water. See there, I've pulled it through the water again just to make that water softer. There we go, we've got some lighter values. And not that this needs it, but if you feel your water wants some depth and value, I'll just pick up some phalo blue and I'll maybe, you can give yourself some, let's just call these depth bands. They're, they're bands of depth. See what I did there? I pick up my blending brush and I'll pull them through as well. Give it a really good, decent and firm pull across and you won't go wrong. Everyone's happy. All right, that's ready to highlight as a simple lake. All right, we're getting there. We've got the simple, easy sky. Uh, we've got the water. Actually, I was just looking at that sky. I might put some misty stuff just in this corner here because it looks a bit bare. I've just picked up some white, the good quality white. I'm roughly shaping, stamping on the pattern how I want the mist. I'll put that down, grab a blending brush, and I want to blend that into that sky. I'm twisting it in, I'm stamping it on and off, and twisting and turning the brush as I go. And we're getting some light, pale mist there. That's a bit too pale, so I'll darken it up a bit more, just so it's visual on the painting. And we'll quickly get that blended in. This has just added a lighter value into the sky there. There's some real distant, whispery clouds there. It's just not a boring, dark blue corner. All right, that's it. How's that look? See? Down here, I have my raw umber and a flathead brush. I've got some retarder there because it's a hot day, so it's going to stop this from drying quicker. Now, this retarder is not going to make this paint as translucent as if I was doing it with water. Now, my horizon line is here. I want it reasonably straight on the lake. So we'll come across here. I think I went a bit low, but too bad. Let's get that on there reasonably straight. I'm just using raw umber. Now we'll just get a, the top of this in. So we, we'll get the, the top shape in. It's very distant. It's not a big mountainous picture like you saw on the display picture and we'll just sort of get this in there and make the horizon line and then we'll block it in I might add a bit of darker value to this as well it's, it seems it's coming a bit light all right, I'm gonna dry this now because I'm ready to put all my foregrounds and everything and some of this is wet still, some of it isn't, so. I wanna dry it because if I don't and you're trying to get some color over it, it'll be wet and muddy and it'll turn into mud. Before I get too far, I've grabbed some of my good quality white again. I'm gonna pull it out on my palette here. 
just wipe the knife and I want some very fine lines these dark bands that I put in the water I want just some fine lines just above them just like that the finest you can get these I feel it just gives your painting better quality and clarity it's very minimal but just enough just like that and we'll get some maybe down here in the middle there we go that'll do alrighty I've got some black gesso and I want to map in roughly where I want my lake the lakes coming here wiggle it up a bit and it's coming up to that point there now I want to map this in black gesso and then I'll bring the rest of my painting over this this gesso dries like matte black it's pretty good you can use normal black if you want but make sure it's dry you've got a black surface to do all your foreground on and you're not painting over multi different light surfaces Now that edge there, it doesn't have to be a tight, sharp edge. That's going to be the shoreline of the lake. Right, close to the water here, we've got some light sand with a lots of grass weeds in it here. So that's what we're gonna do now. On my palette, I've mixed up raw umber and some white. We're using the colors within the painting and we'll use this to scratch in. I'm just using the flathead brush here. I'm coming off the edge there. I've dried that black gesso and I want to run this into the foreground field. I'm pulling the paint off this flathead brush and now the edge there I want to sort of tassel it into that broken up edge just so it's whispered and broken it's not a sharp neat little pattern it's a painting all right see what i'm doing there i'm pushing it over that black there's not much paint left on the brush it's tearing it over that surface and we've got our edge there now we'll come across here some more so i'm starting away from this edge here using the paint within the off the brush and then come along Bring it to the edge and pull it over into the water there just to give it that aspect of a painting with a little bit of pizzazz. All right. I'm, I've made some darker value of this as well. So we'll come across here. Just get it in there. Don't muck around with it. Just try and get the paint onto your canvas as best and as confident as possible and you'll be right get all that in there I'll wipe that and pick up some more it's, oh, must have been a bit of wet paint under there now I'm going to grab the darker tone of this which is right here so you, you can see the different colors just so we can add some shadows into there. All right, so mainly near the foreground. I'm just gonna sort of dab these in like that and just not think too much, just get some darker shadows and values in there just to break it up. Wiggle it across here somewhere. There we go. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just wiping that brush, getting all the paint off it and we'll We'll just sort of sink them down a bit if we can blend them in a bit just so they don't look like amateur blobs all over your painting. It might pay to do these one at a time if you can't do it. So you're virtually like putting it on and blending it in. Now down here I've just got my little brush I've used for blending or little shrubs. 
I've got my forest green, sap green and mid yellow. Over here we have some small shrubbery against the edge of the shoreline. So I'm just gonna put those in. I'll start off with my forest green, which is the darker of the lot. Now this don't need too much, just get some little shrubbery there. There's one, just bits piercing against the edge of the waterline there. With these, you want dark values underneath the actual shrub. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now, let's not get carried away and put too many of these in, but we'll just put enough. Just there. Grab yourself a flat brush, something you can just sort of maybe pull that down into the ground there. Just subtly, very subtly. Work out where and how you're looking at that. Just subtly pull it down if you want to. It just kind of sits it onto the ground there. Look at that. Pick up your sap green. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Let's just find a nice temperament we can highlight that with. Now that's very wet. I'm looking at it. That's very wet. I don't want it too wet. So I'm drying it out, stamping it on my palette here. And we'll work out just some basic highlights on these shrubberies here. Just basic. Some of them can dance over the dark bit, sinks things back. Well, we are getting there with the foreground. Now what we're gonna do is, in the photo, it's got some light, dead, strawy grass there. I don't wanna put that in the painting. I wanna make it more vibrant, pretty much like this setup here. That's me style. So that's what I wanna incorporate. All this black here, I'm gonna have it running through there. Sticking with the forest green and the sap green, I'm loading up that flathead brush again, and I want to use that to bring up all this into that sand area there, leaving some depth as well. So if anything, it's all going to come across this way. So I'll sort of dance it across here. And this is the darker value greens that I'll be using. I'll better get this over here first, so it's coming there the front here I like doing this because then we can put the other value in there but before we do because not many beginners can do wet on wet you want to blow dry this first layer of forest green all right just getting our forest green loaded on the brush now and we'll do the same so you could probably Work out these edges here, what you want to do first, how you want that to look. I'm trying to shape my brush as I pick paint up so it's not just a, a willy-nilly head on it. You don't want to go giving your painting a crappy head from the brush. All right, we're getting there. I might put a bit of lighter tone there somewhere. Yeah, that's looking good. Maybe over here. Now just to highlight that, I've got yellow green out of the tube. And again, careful, don't overdo it with this one. I want to start from say like this front area here, nice and softly touch this. This you just want in bits and pieces. So if we could find the, the areas that are getting lit up or something. Load up the brush some more. Now like I've done before, I've just gone a bit heavy there. I can get the sap green and soften that down again. This has just got bits getting hit by the sun here and there. Creating different layers of all this, just so it doesn't look flat. All right. 
Now this tree, we're keeping with the colours in the painting, which I could see raw umber here toned down with some white. So we'll put this in the foreground now. So we'll put this tree somewhere about here. Now I've got my raw umber, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag it. Might need this wet for it to work too. I'll wet it and flick the water out. I'm pulling up the raw umber on one side of it, and I'll get some white on the other. And I'll hold the brush up right, so I've got light and dark on the brush. I'll work out where I want my light, and we'll come from about here, press it on. Now, I'm gonna come up, make the tree similar but different to what's on the picture. Twisting it, I've got highlights everywhere. I've gotta load it up again. Load that up with brown, load that up with white. Uh, twisting, twisting, twisting it. We've got highlights already everywhere, look at that. Get him up there, load it up again, dark on one side, light on the other. Because uh, it's got a few dark branches here and there, so we'll get a dark one here. Twist it and get some highlights happening, there we go. Now I'm going to grab my thick fluffy script liner, I'm going to use that, wet that raw umber down a bit. So I've got something to control. And like these branches now, we want to sort of come up, down into the painting. So it looks like they're reaching backwards away from the person looking at the picture. Now, I've put that white on the brush before. I'm able to pull through it and give some of these branches different textures and highlights as I go. I'm just pulling up the raw umber in there and you know, we've already got the different colours going through the tree. Twist this brush as you go. Keep the paint nice and moist. And we've just got lots of little sticky bits coming off. Now in our reference picture, we've got some black in here. So I blow dried this, so we're not going to get our black turning into grey. And I want to kind of just work out where their black ones are. Because in the photo, the colours are working for the picture. So if you can produce or near enough those colours in your painting, you're going to get the look. But if you're looking at a painting and you think, wow, that's nice, but my painting didn't turn out nothing like it, it's because you just didn't quite match your colours enough. Colours have a lot to do with a, a painting. And if, even like if you can get shadows of the painting right, not that I'm an expert on it, but I'm just giving you my philosophy. Some of it all over here, we're getting all these darks in. And see that dark, it's bringing up that tree. It's just not a flat two dimension tree. That's what pulling some of these branches down do. You haven't just got a flat tree on your canvas, you've got a tree with dimension in my eyes. So let me just finish this off. Anyone that's been to Perth, Western Australia and been to Lake Nangara, this is the kind of dead foliage out there. I mean, it's not a, it's not a tourist attraction, but it's just a part of our state that's something a lot of the locals know about. All right, and I think we'll just put a shrub over here. Something nice and easy. I'll show you what I mean by nice and easy. We'll just get like a couple of um, branches going up. So the, the basic structure of a tree, either do your main foliage, but this one has some distinct branches between the far ground there, see? So we're gonna put these in first. Distinct trunks and if we want while well, we've got the black there we can get a bit of black on them just a bit of black all right now let's blow dry that before we do I'm going to wipe the brush and pull a shadow roughly here into there Okay, 
Now they've been dried, and if you come over to the display picture, we're going to create this bush here. So I picked up my forest green, and let's start stabbing that on. This ain't going to be as bright as the grass, but don't try and black out the whole thing. You want to see through this, so we're, we've got the darker of the green, and we're stamping on the outlay of what we want, keeping it into the shape of the picture. It's coming down the ground here at ground level. Sometimes you might need to put a bit of water on that brush, not too much, just so she comes off. There we go. And we'll just cover over some of those trunks now, not all of them, just leave some of it there. And we've got our shadow already blanked in there. The top's looking a bit yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Now with the Australian sap green, I'm just going to highlight that. So, not too much. Just get what you want in front. I want this bit in front. Get the tops done. Distinguish the different lays of the bush. And get some over the trunks there. And that's pretty much it. Okay, just before I sign it, I want to get some yellow oxide, come over here, dance this, just to brighten this corner up because I'm not too happy with too much brown in it. So we'll just get that in there, tickle it into the grass. Don't even wipe the brush or clean it. Pick up some mid-yellow and get that into there. Okay. And maybe some yellow ochre again, or yellow oxide, and there we go. Grabbing your forest green again, I've just dried this, and we'll just sit this grass back over that yellow just so it looks there we go we just sit that back down like that yellow forest green wipe the brush pick up the sap green do the same bring that through And then we'll wash that brush and highlight it with some yellow green. Not too much. Just so we can get these, bring it from there back over to the footpath. Okay. Back over there and onto there. So what I'll do, I'll put my autograph in the corner here. And we can set a frame over it and see how she looks all right. Don't know what happened to Jeff, he buggered off. There we go, we got Lake Nangara from Perth, Western Australia. A photo put in by Jeff, he wanted me to paint. And we've got like our cloudy sky, foreground horizon, the lake, the foreground, and the trees that represent that area. That's not too shabby, eh? Okay, quick simple exercise there for you beginners there. I really like that, thanks mate. Well oh, thanks Jeff, well it's pretty much representing the photo that you bought in today and um, it's something beginners can learn. It's got all the basic aspects of a uh, landscape picture you want to paint out there. It's amazing right? how you do that in my picture, that's great. Okay, exactly, all right. I hope you like that exercise. Tell a friend if you like what I do, but if you don't, you tell everybody, okay? Be sure to subscribe on the picture in my corner down below. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.